everybody, how's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know this. This is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast, sponsored by Dark Fusion Systems, the best in your custom computing technology for your gaming needs, creative needs, music needs, whatever it is. They got the right custom computer for you. You can get $100 off your entire build using the code CPPOD at checkout. Do link in description below. So make sure you go and do that if you want your best custom computer. I mean, it's the new year, so why not? Now let's go into future presentation. It is our first episode of the new year, and we're going to go back to a band we brought on back on episode 95, Three Exits to Hattiesburg. We're going to talk about a band that somehow is still keeping it going with members living almost 2,000 miles apart and... How smart it is to print your own merch at a smaller level. <gasps> oh, dear God. You guys ready? Let's go! Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast. I've been doing this for almost like five years now, which is absolutely freaking insane to think about. And we brought on plenty of bands within that time. Now, we're going to start the year out by going all the way back to one of the bands that was originally on, one of the first 100 bands we had on here, and let's get an update with them because let's just keep supporting new music, man. That's all that we're about here, so we're going to make sure it happens, so please welcome back Benny and Adam from the band Three Exits to Hattiesburg back to the podcast. So, gentlemen, welcome back. Awesome. It's great to be here. Yeah, thank you for having us again. Thanks for reaching out and being back on, guys. I really do appreciate it. Now, I got to ask, what the hell has been up with you guys? I have not spoken to you on the podcast in three and a half years, pretty much, which is like, you know, how many years is that in dog years? Like 24, 25 years in dog years. So, holy shit, did we wait a long time to do this. So, what have you guys been up to? Uh, <laughs> not not as much as we'd hope to be, I'd say, <laughs> but, but also a lot. Um not long, or I guess a year after we talked to you last, I uh, I up and moved to Connecticut. <laughs> so uh, so that was a uh, that was a bit tumultuous, and uh, we kept busy with the move instead of with the band for a little bit. Uh, but we've been trying to keep it going, still trying to do shows. Um, we did the Big E uh, Festival in Massachusetts, uh, so that was pretty cool. We've done a couple more shows in Texas. We've done a couple up here. Uh, so we've been keeping busy where we can, but it's a lot harder, uh, a time zone and however many states away. Yeah. Yeah. It's been wild. Uh, that move was especially like that took up cause I came over and I helped Benny's, I helped Benny move all his shit out of the house. And then I helped his parents pack up and move. And, uh, so that took up a lot of my time. <laughs> yeah i got off scot free i was already in connecticut when they moved yeah benny <laughs> dipped i it took me an extra week to get all the shit out of that house um but i'm here in texas i'm pursuing a doctorate in physical therapy uh, so i'm doing nerd shit down here and uh we basically are on uh we're basically on like email terms if we want to do music <laughs> or like we have to share google drives back and forth it's been rough yeah, <laughs> the music creation aspect has been rough, but like a, but that's about the only thing. I mean, we've been yeah, know, like, we uh we always do like phone calls to end up like with the tour. We've talked on the phone a lot, and it's always like, hey, I got this question about tour, and then we're on the phone for like half an hour talking about other shit. Like, I mean, an hour ago, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if that's what's going to happen, that's what's going to happen. You guys are friends, so of course it's not going to be all about business. You're not just going to go in there to a phone conversation and just, okay, you know, uh, what are we doing here? This. Okay, cool. You're going to end up bullshitting about something. You're going to end up asking about some, And next thing you know, you're going to end up reminiscing about some weird-ass time that, you know, one of your friends did, you know, something absolutely crazy like throw water balloons at a moving car at people and just have a blast with it because why the fuck not? It's something that happens. But I do really want to dive deeper into this because now we've got Benny who moved all the way out to Connecticut. Adam, you said you're doing nerd shit in Texas. And when it comes to wanting to do anything with music, you guys are basically doing it pandemic style all over again, having to share everything online via Google Drive because you can't necessarily get together in person. And we all know there's a lot of bands out there, especially the bigger bands where these guys don't live together. These guys don't live in the same city anymore. They're all over the place or sometimes all over the world. But for a younger band like yourselves that hasn't necessarily broken through in that aspect and keeping the band going and having such great distance, that's something that is really not heard of. So especially at this point in time, what are some of the absolute biggest challenges that you guys have overcome right now? 
when it pertains to keeping three exits Hattiesburg going, given this massive distance between you two guys? Oh, uh, playing live shows despite the distance so far. Cause like, um, when I first started my program, we, like I, like Benny said, we played the big E festival up in Connecticut and I flew up there during my, like, I think it was like my third or fourth week of school and, uh, and made it happen. Yeah. I ditched like, I ditched like three classes <laughs> <laughs> and, um, to make that happen. And it was so crazy. Cause we flew up Benny. How many hours was I there in total? Uh, like, definitely not 24. He came up like, I think he landed at like midnight the day before the show. Uh, we went and got home to my house, practiced in the basement uh, until like 4 a.m., went yeah. to sleep, woke up at noonish, which was late to get us to the Big E, got to the Big E. On the last song, I said, everybody say bye to Adam. We're walking off this stage, getting in the car and going to the airport. And that's exactly what we did. We finished. We said hi to a couple of people who were at the show, but it was all on the way out the door. <laughs> yeah. We got in the car. We were like, fuck, we get your flight to the fucking hour. <laughs> we'll no, that's just a straight up like business. 15 hours. You were here. It was rough. God, that does sound rough. I mean, but that's just like one instance, too, of one show. But if that's something you're consistently doing, especially, you know, Adam, given your position right now, going for your doctorate. And I, I got to assume also at that same point in time, too, where having the money to be able to do this stuff necessarily isn't there because it's probably, you know, earmarked for other things such as schooling. So, like, I, I kind of want to get a little bit more in details of how you guys are making this happen do the fact that it's such an unprecedented thing for me to see a band that hasn't necessarily doesn't have like a record contract with people living all over the place, still making a go of it and still making it happen. It's something that is sounding. So I want to dive deeper into just how you guys are actually doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, So getting Adam up here, um, you know, being in our early, uh, I guess now mid twenties, fuck. Uh, <laughs> um, and be, being young, you know, there's not really a lot of money. So it's like, booking Adam on cheap ass flights or uh, what we've been doing a lot uh, is using built up miles. Um, so like for tour, uh, my job just sent me to Europe uh, last month. And so I used all the miles from that trip for this tour. <laughs> so it cost us $10 for Adam's round trip tr tickets because we use miles. Um, so that's, that's been the hack is just using built up miles. Um, but scheduling, I think is, is the biggest challenge. Cause obviously with a job, you know, you get a set amount of PTO. That's one thing. But when you're in school for a doctorate, you're, you're not really given the opportunity to just say these days I'm going to be gone. Yeah. It's like, I have my break, which is like happening. My, my semester ended a couple of days ago and like, I have my break right now until, january 11th or 12th or something like that and then i i actually think you go back the 8th <laughs> yeah is, so you fly back and then you're back in school <laughs> well like i fly back and i have a weekend and then i start back up so we we have to fit this into very specific time spaces or else it's not going to get done at all so that's just been the challenge has been coordinating everything since like because I'm, I'm still in school and benny like we're kind of in similar but also different phases of our lives but also still trying to make this music stuff happen because it's fucking fun and we want to keep doing it so um and I we think really like to get back to like being in a normal phase for us and that's yeah. you know career musicians <laughs> so after a couple years of like this adult life bullshit i'm real keen on <laughs> making music work <laughs> so down i'm so down Hey, if I would disagree with you, I'd be a hypocrite for my own self, like if, if it was worth it. Because, I mean, since we last talked, I mean, I'm still working a full time job, but I'm getting ever closer to saying goodbye to that thing and just doing this full time because, well, yeah, this is much more fun. Tr trust me, doing that stuff creative that you're passionate about is much more fun than living that normal adult life that they constantly pitch to you because then you just become like this boring drone who at 35 is wondering what the hell you did with your life. Yeah, and, and I know a lot of people in bands, like right now, and obviously everybody else doesn't do what we do with the whole across state lines yeah. thing. Everybody has, you know, bandmates that are a couple minutes away from each other. 
And I remember when we did the big E, uh, I had a lot of friends who were like, why the hell would you fly up a drummer? There's plenty of drummers in Connecticut. And I was like, I, you'll see. <laughs> and we did the show and they were all like, holy fuck, I'd fly him up. I was like, yeah, <laughs> like there's, there's kind of no way around it. I can get another drummer, but he's not gonna, he's not gonna, it's not gonna be three exits anymore is frankly it. Yeah, it wouldn't be three exits. It'd be two exits and a slight uh, shoulder off ramp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or three, two exits in a dirt road. I don't know. One of the two. But now, again, it, it makes a lot of sense to the point where, where yes, you guys are both in different aspects of life where, Adam, you're in school going for your doctorate, which, of course, anytime you're going for any kind of doctorate, that that ain't easy. And, uh, Benny, you've got everything you're going on with your full-time job. I mean, you just went over to Europe for a month. But the biggest two things I've seen from you guys, especially throughout this conversation so far, is one, you still have this drive, you still have this hunger and this want to do it, and you're not going to be letting any of these other obstacles get in the way of what you truly want to do. There are so many times in life and so many times when it comes to the creative aspect where these roadblocks get put in front of us, these challenges get put in front of us. And because at times, you know, they seem a little bit tough or maybe seem like they're a little hard to come over, we end up taking the easy way out and going around them, but then just completely forgetting about our dream or turning around and going a different direction. That's not necessarily what you guys are. You guys are figuring it out every step of the way. Plus, you're trying to figure out what's going to be the best way you can do this and be the most efficient with it. Using built up airline miles to fly Adam up there makes a lot of sense. I have a friend who she uses a bar, she uses all the airline miles she can that she ends up building up to go and travel over Europe and then does it as cheaply as possible because that's what she likes to do. Okay, perfect, fine. You're doing what you want to do. You're doing it and you're figuring out a way to get it done. That's what you guys are doing right here. You're figuring out a way to make this work because the passion is still there. The connection is still there. The chemistry is still there. And you're not about to let this thing go away just because life is a little bit harder than, you know, maybe what other people are experiencing. But then at the same time, comparatively, are you can look at it and say it to yourself, are other people going after what they truly want to go after in life versus what I'm going after? And if, everyone's going to have different things they want to go after in life. But if there are people that are just doing things that they're kind of just, you know, sleepwalking through life on because it's the easy way, well, you guys are taking the tougher road, but doing it because you're doing something that you love and you're driving towards that. In the end, you're going to end up looking back at life and remembering the crazy times you had during this and not regretting the fact that you didn't do this. Oh, That's well, actually I'm how I, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> you're good, Ben. Go on, go on, Benny. That's actually how I got Adam to come to the big key. Because <laughs> um, because originally we booked it and he he didn't start school yet. And then he did. And he was like, fuck, I got to do this. And I was like, what if we just make the ship trip shorter? Because originally he was here for like a week. Um, and then, hi, Dan. Uh, <laughs> and right, then... Um, story and fucking spit roast Dan. Okay. <laughs> let me finish this and then we can spit roast Dan. <laughs> Which I think sounds worse than it should. I, I don't think that's the right thing to say. <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I called Adam and we were like, it was about to be like, he can't make it. And I was like, are you going to look back in, you know, 10, 15 years and regret missing your classes to come to this show or are you going to regret not playing this this festival that might be one of our biggest gigs we've ever played and and that's kind of how we did it and i think that's kind of how we're doing everything at this point uh it's just what what am i going to tell my eventual imaginary children uh sorry i uh don't don't follow your dreams i didn't or fuck it might as well <laughs> yeah yeah take that 15 hours to go to a different state play your play your silly show no matter how <laughs> tired you may be go do i'll say i take that same approach with the podcast as well where like okay i'm trying to bring guests on i'm trying to do certain things or like going to concerts there's times because i live in milwaukee it's like there's times where you know, there's concerts out in chicago on a tuesday night that i want to go and see and always in my mind, I think, what am I going to remember more? What am I going to remember in the next week even? Am I going to remember going to this show, doing this thing, bringing this band the podcast, skipping this certain thing, and having a blast doing it? Or am I going to remember getting enough sleep that night to go to work the next day? 
Fuck, no, I'm not going to remember the nights I had a, you know, got a good night's sleep. I remember the nights that I went out, I went mosh so damn hard that my arm turned purple. And then I went to work the next day thinking, hey, hey this looks kind of funny. And just enjoying it. Those are the ones that I remember. And those are the moments that you look back on life and you just give have a certain fondness for. And it's all because you're going after what you love. You're going after your dreams. You're going after your passion. Life. And it's not necessarily your dreams. You're going after your goals because you have a plan in place to make those things happen and you're actively working on them and it's like your dreams they become goals goals have a goals have a like a plan have a purpose dreams are just kind of you know a la la land but you guys are going for it, going and driving for it and the tenacity to keep this going while being so far apart absolutely makes sense whether it's you know over you know probably 1000 1500 2000 miles away or right next to you know Benny on the couch right there who just showed up about a minute ago Dan <laughs> oh, and to be clear, God. Adam lives in Texas, so it would have made sense if Adam was late to the end. <laughs> <laughs> he has his own computer. <laughs> good point. Yeah. Good point. This is Dan. <laughs> well, hi, Dan. Thanks for Hello. showing up. I mean, you know, I'm looking at Thanks my imaginary watch. We were supposed to be on a half past a freckle, and now it's you know one and three quarters past a freckle. Man, what the hell? The basis okay. are great with time. What can I say? <laughs> it's true. You know what? I'm, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. You know, agree with that and just say, "Yep, it's just basis and time." What can you say? It's, he's half the rhythm section. Yeah, you gotta keep time. I'm great at following time. Time's my whole deal. <laughs> this time, yeah. is, I'll say this time his internal clock was just a little bit delayed. That was it. He had everything yeah. set, but he just, you know. He forgot to switch yeah. over to daylight savings time back in November. He was yeah. off tap for this one. <laughs> also, he there's was water over there if you want any. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I just had to have yeah. some fun with that a little bit. I love it whenever someone just jumps in the podcast willy nilly at like the middle point, just because you never know what's going to happen. Always got to have some fun with it. But Dan, glad to have you on, man. Thank you. So jumping back into it, just again, because you guys are so separate, it just it's it's again it's just astounding the fact that you guys are making this happen, and you guys are gonna be end up you guys are gonna end up going on a small tour end of 2023, early 2024 as well. So what's going on with that? Um, so I think the original plan was actually to tour in April, um, but. Uh, like we've been saying, school schedule, it didn't work out. Uh, Adam's got a longer break now than he did uh, for spring. So we were like, let's let's take the longer one. Um, and it's been four, over four years since our last tour. So we were just like, now's the time. We were going to do it in 2020, uh, but we, uh, <laughs> we that something happened. <laughs> something came up <laughs> in 2020 that kind of kind of ruined that for us uh right. and then for the next couple of years obviously trying to schedule a tour with you know, me moving uh covid still happening uh it was just not a good time to schedule it so we were just kind of sprinkling shows in here and there uh so with the tour it's really exciting we're going to a couple places we haven't uh been before or at least performed before um so we're hitting some states that we haven't hit before. We're excited to kind of get back out there and meet new fans, maybe convince some people to be fans. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Convince some people to be fans, strong arm remember the being fans, like, hey, become a fan of Three Exits to Hattiesburger. Do something else. I don't know. That's the bottom line because we said so. <laughs> Why Why are you? Are you? <laughs> we have cool posters. <laughs> I mean, if you want to win people over and try and win over some fans, you guys might have to go on stage and just, if you guys have a, like a break point in time that you guys can add this in there, go on and do full on WWE style promos on each other and just see what happens. And then maybe break, uh, you know, spit like, you know, pull a straws or whoever gets a short stick has to get a tube light broken over their head. Yeah. Like, that makes sense. We I'm actually... Really I'm rigging it so damn so Dan draws the shortest straw. <laughs> that's what that's what I was gonna say. We actually already planned it, and it was whoever gets to the interview. Say <laughs> 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 so, so I had to Dan, bring that up. Taking the first tube yeah. light. So the only reason, only reason I bring that up is because you know we're talking about you know you know getting new fans, and again, who else is gonna do some sort of like you know WWE style shit during a live show? 
Plus, I saw that happen live literally at a wrestling event where they just started smashing each other with light bulbs and the crowd was just like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I mean, The only over- negative is like venue promoters. I feel like if you smash a light, they're going to fucking throw a bit. They don't even like it when you fucking have your amp at the wrong time. <laughs> that is true. Well, then we got to find venues that are, you know, going to actually enjoy and embrace the chaos that bands can bring. Who who wants a show where everyone's just standing there just going, yay, yay, yay. That's not fun. People going, yeah! Now that's fun. Yeah. I'm going to start putting that in the booking emails. It's going to be, hey, um, book us for the venue. Broken glass everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Broken glass everywhere. Someone will clean up. Who that someone is, just, it's different every single night. Yep. <laughs> You we find the out. person that's being the most boring in the crowd and we have them clean it up. <laughs> um, I was thinking funny story about this tour um, that I mean, I guess kind of fits with, with emailing. So from like booking shows, uh, booking the last tour, I've come to realize, you know, you throw however many emails, I probably sent 20 emails per city we were going for. And you, you literally get one response back. So you got to get real lucky. Um, so I tried something, uh, uh, modern problems require modern solutions. And I had chat GPT write all the emails. (laughs) And it's the first tour where I've had multiple venues respond and I've been able to say, no, sorry, already booked. And God, that feels fucking good after so many years of venues being like, nope. (laughs) Oh, dear God. Thankfully, these venues probably don't go and use ChatGPT and just like turn it like, was this written by AI? Yes or no? <laughs> they're not going to go full on educator on this. No, they're just going to be happy. They're going to be psyched because, you know, there's going to be a great band that's coming to play their city. That's what they're going to be psyched about. And the fact they responded to it. Now you got a little bit of an interesting little thing you can add in there through that email process because... If you're seeing that it works for you and it's seeing that, you know, you're getting venues that you guys want to play and you're getting on to uh, this whole entire tour, keep going for it. Keep trying it because one of two things, one, honestly, typing that stuff in there and letting ChatGPT run it probably saves you a lot of time. Secondly, if you're seeing success behind it, hell, why not use it? No, I agree. It, it was incredible. I I'm kind of surprised because it definitely like read like a robot wrote it. <laughs> it was like, you're astounding venue. Uh, we think we'd go well together. <laughs> and I was like, fuck it. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, your venue is simply sensational. <laughs> I'd no, love no. to play on your delicious stage. <laughs> uh, indubitably, I would play at this venue. <laughs> Did you, you may get- have heard of us. We we are the fantastic and groundbreaking three eggs in Stanisburg. It's like, fuck, ChatGPT knows who the fuck we are. Uh, you know what's up. <laughs> Not selecting us to play your bodacious venue would be an insufferable decision. <laughs> that sounds like a threat. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I put the word bodacious in there, isn't it? I think so. There's something about about the, the, the hard B and D that makes it sound kind of rough. <laughs> the hard B and D in there. As long as there's no S and M in there, I think the venue will go for it. Yeah. I right, fuck it. We can try and see if they go for it this way. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying new things. I guess it depends <laughs> on the venue, honestly. I mean, if you guys took your eggs to Addiesburg to Amsterdam and tried that, I think you would get over tremendously, but <laughs> That's the story for a different day. <laughs> yeah, 2025, we're actually going to be playing in Amsterdam and like standing in the shop windows and, and the highest bidder gets us for the night. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I would pay That's big money just point. to see that happen, but also see who would pay to get through. It'd be the big winner of three exits to Hattiesburg in Amsterdam. Performing in the red light district. I want to see this happen. Oh yeah, yeah we just got to figure out how to get the drums on the airplane. Well, they'd say they'd see Dan and they'd be like, "That one, please," and like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when three exits to Hattiesburg turned into two exits to Hattiesburg. <laughs> Someone and- help! Our bassist is still in Amsterdam. I hear he's having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> You, 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 you get a, you get you get an email like two days later. All of a sudden, he's just from Dan. 
I am fine. It's like, <laughs> I don't know if he got stolen. I don't know if he's using chat GPT or <laughs> if he is just like in a state of euphoria and all he could muster to actually send to us was, I am fine. <laughs> Would you say anything different, or would it just be, I'm fine. I'm fucking in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, so now I'm kind of, I'm again, I'm, I'm kind of still geeking out the fact that you use ChatGPT for this, because even for the podcast, too, like, I'm not going to lie, I use ChatGPT to help me out with some things, mostly finding what the best title for the episodes are going to be. Just, But it's something where it's like, it's a tool that we can use, if there's a way we can use it and have it be more efficient for us, have it be more successful for us, not only as creative, but like just to help us out, maybe, you know, get some creative juices flowing. Why not? The, why not use it? I'm not saying depend on it. I'm just saying use it as a tool. Yeah, I think it's good for like the things like as a musician, I, sending out booking emails is not one of the things I really enjoy doing about music. So for the things that I don't care about, like, yeah, that, that mm-hmm. that's something I think is really useful. It, it helped the tour go by a lot faster i mean our first tour we were we were booking shows and bands a week before we left still so like right now we'd still be booking shows um and this time we were i think two months in advance we were able to have it set in stone we didn't really have any work to do besides merch and stuff now i hope to god you guys have some cool ass merch that you guys are gonna bring out on this tour because if you guys don't i'm gonna be slightly slightly disappointed in you oh, <laughs> oh we're gonna, we got the coolest merch. we're gonna get a preview of the merch now the, i mean my i mean my main question is is when it comes to this merch are we gonna get something like you know big letters and impact font or are we gonna get you know the crazy metal core mods Somebody's or like listening like on spotify like what the fuck <laughs> it's What's actually just a white it? shirt with comic sans written on it um so we <laughs> hired a, could you imagine if just like Microsoft Paint? I crawled all that fucking terrible thing. Um, so we got a tattoo artist in uh, Jersey. Her name's Jaden, uh, and so we hired her and said, "Can you can you draw something? Uh, here's kind of what we're thinking." And she she took that so much further than I could have thought and made it so good. So on the front of our shirts, we've got just a little logo, um, skull flowers, the band name. And then on the back, we have it in full color. You can definitely tell just taking a look at that was definitely drawn by a tattoo artist because it does look like it doesn't belong in a shirt. It looks like it belongs on your body. Which is exactly the the vibe we were hoping for. Um, So I'm glad that it comes across. (laughs) Um, But uh, yeah, we we hand printed them, uh, which is a pretty cool process. We've always done that with our shirts. But a design is, you know, detailed as this mm-hmm. has been probably more challenging than what we've done before. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't have flown with the old hardware. Benny, did you get a new t-shirt printer? I used the exact same press. I got new screens um, and new ink, pretty much. I used nicer materials besides the press. Okay, The gotcha. press is the same. Just because the down like the basement of their house right now looks like a factory, <laughs> there's shirts everywhere. There's... Not anymore. I, I I fixed that up. <laughs> oh really? It's good. It's good. I do. There's not now shirts everywhere. It's, now it's in party mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's we we uh, we finished the shirts. What the fuck was that? Like, a week or two ago? It was last week. Yeah, so we finished the shirts last week. Um, and then packed them all up. And now I just got to put them in a box to fit in a minivan for tour. (laughs) Okay. I want to dive a little bit deeper into this whole shirt thing, mostly because my cousins have their own screen printing business and I did work there one summer. So I kind of had a little bit of a look into this. And when it comes to when you guys are like, you know, you guys hand, like hand print them and everything or hand press them and everything, you guys just use like a normal press kind of style where you just got to like have the screen on there. Like you said, like, and kind of like rub the ink back and forward just so that you can get it properly on the shirt. Yeah. Um, so for for this, we did the like CMYK style, which okay. is kind of just how a basic inkjet printer works. Um, so I separated the colors on Photoshop, printed them all out and put them on the screens. Uh, and then 
the only person I know who's like actually good at inking the shirts is my girlfriend. So like I had to work around her work schedule and be like, you gotta be here. Sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it. We, we have a four color press, uh, had four screens on there, went around, did them, had, uh, had, uh, Dan on hair dryer duty <laughs> in between inking. We dried them off a little bit. I was going to ask because taking a look at the design that you had, it definitely looks like it's more than four colors. So how many total screens did you use in order to make that happen? Oh, it's, it's four like, colors. It's, it's, it's only, only four, four colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's witchcraft. We were, we were sitting down there and we we're like, how the fuck does blue make it look more orange? <laughs> it, it was incredible. Like uh, the greens came out really nice, but yeah, it's just four colors. See, that astounds me because just seeing how many colors were in there, I was thinking you had to use at least like nine or 10 different screens. Yeah, that's what I would think too. But I, I saw a video a while back of somebody like, doing an actual photo with a four color press. And I was like, I got to try it. There's no way that works. <laughs> and it does. That's and, crazy. Now, like, it, they oh, must have streamlined. Oh, my bad. They must no. have streamlined that from the last time we did shirts. <laughs> it was a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about that the entire time we did these. We were like, this did this not go this well with the fucking Raggedy Ann shirts. <laughs> Those shirts still look great, but like, a, but mm, the process. But we also called like five different audibles on those shirts. Those were originally supposed to be full color, and it, and it just wasn't working. And we were like, fine, three. White, red, <laughs> and black. We're done. <laughs> We've spent two months trying to figure this out. Fuck this. It's over. <laughs> and they look, honestly, they look better with just red, black, and white. Um, but yeah, no, this one, I was like, this has to work because <laughs> this design's fucking cool. I mean, taking a look at the design, even just from the standpoint of where you showed me on camera, I can't even see it like up close in person. I don't have one in my hands right now. I kind of wish I did. But it literally looked like the way you guys want to present it, it looked like a tattoo was directly on a shirt. It looks like it belongs on your skin. It looks like it belongs as a gigantic back piece. Or if you guys were to shrink it up, it looks like it belongs like somewhere right here. Or shrink it up, you know, put it nice calmly on your little ankle right there. Just, ooh, yeah, right there. Just have it looking all pretty and whatnot. But from other, other because you guys have been in music for quite some time now, other bands that are in the scene right now, the other bands that you know that you work with, that you constantly see at shows, so kind of bands in the same levels of, as you guys, do a lot of them print their own shirts like this as well? Or do they like to outsource their stuff and get their merch from somebody else, like go to like Custom Ink or something like that? I kind of want to get a little bit further into this just because right now, this is kind of fascinating to me that you guys like I know a full on four color press in your basement making these shirts. It's just... Are you guys the only ones that really do this that you know of right now? Um, for a long time, yes, because we've been doing it ourselves since 2016. Um, but we were doing single color uh, back then. Um, but we've been doing it ourselves the entire time. We've never ordered merch from someone else. Um, and when we were doing it then, there was not a single other band I knew of in Houston that did it. I'm sure there are, uh, but I didn't know them personally. Uh, when I moved up here, I did an acoustic show with this guy, um, in a band called Zombie and we were out, uh, talking and he was like, we converted a bus into a tour van and I was like, tell me more about that. And he was like, well, we saved money because we, we printed our own shirts. And I was like, no fucking way. <laughs> I, I do that. Tour bus? <laughs> oh yeah, we're getting a tour bus next. <laughs> it's going to be a minivan. I, I'm obsessed with minivans. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I've met one other band. I've talked to another band recently who were actually playing with, uh, on this tour in Connecticut and they were like, it's our dream to, to get a, a press. Um, but with how well these worked, I'm going to start being like, Hey, you, you guys want to, you want to pay me to do this? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, so that smart. I'll say before you know, Ben, you're going to end up having to quit your full-time job because you're just going to be printing for all these other bands in the area. Or yeah, you're going to end up just like exhausting yourself and be like, work, work my full-time job. I go home and what are you doing? I'm working and I'm just printing shirts, printing shirts, printing shirts. You're going to become the supplier for all bands in Connecticut when it comes to merch, custom merch. I'm going to be, I'm going to be the merch kingpin. <laughs> More colors only. <laughs> you want five, fucking go somewhere else. Oh, sorry. Get out of my basement. Go somewhere else. <laughs> See if you're gonna be the if you're gonna be the the merch kingpin, what you gotta do is you gotta get yourself a button down shirt. If you don't have any chest hair, put some fake chest hair on there, a medallion, and just just kind of sit there, arms crossed, not moving. It's like 
You want your merch? Got to pay me to get your merch. I'm going to screen print the fuck out of that button, Def. <laughs> 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 it's just a t-shirt with a button down printed on it where can you get work like this nowhere else <laughs> nowhere else just down here in this basement could you imagine if you guys like made band merch and you screen printed out a button down just for the fuck of it <laughs> <laughs> but instead of like the chest here it's just it's like a it's like someone's the same it's like skin tone here and it's got like three exits written on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like that. Three exits. Yeah, like a tattoo. And yeah, on the like back, we have a little tiny exits. raven, like right above the ass crack. <laughs> <laughs> you They're guys could... custom ordered, so we get the right skin tone every time. <laughs> I think that idea slaps. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> it's too silly not to do. Place your order. Do not go to the beach. <laughs> 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 I, I think that'd be one hell of an idea just because it, when I look at merch and I look at other bands merch you're always looking for something that is one of two things one it has to absolutely stand out or it has to be printed on a black t-shirt there's only one of two options and when you have the ones that just absolutely stand out above anything else you're just like oh my god that's the one I gotta get that's the one I want doesn't matter what color it is I want that one I think one of the best one I can think of is uh, even though it's like it, it's it's simple as all hell, but at uh, Louder Than Life in 2022, one of my buddies bought a white nine inch nails t shirt. It just had the nine inch nails logo on it in black. If you got the black with the white, it's like it just looked like any other shirt, but just because it was a completely different color and the logo popped out so well, it was like that's when I saw everyone wearing. That's one that everyone was getting because it stood out so much more. Or all the, you know, look, think about back when, you know, 2010s with the crazy metalcore monsters, when they're being printed on like, you know, bright green shirt, bright orange shirt, bright blue shirt. They literally metalcore got their merch ideas from John Cena. That's where they got them from. Like John <laughs> Cena, 2010, Fruity Pebbles style. But can you imagine if you guys literally did that, you know, t-shirt looks like a button down. You have the like chest, you know, thing here with the skin tone literally has three exits to Hattiesburg and then on the back you have it look like the you know the shirt's kind of flaring up a little bit and you get that little raven tattoo in the back signifying ooh, someone's had a little fun in their life I think people would definitely buy it maybe if you want maybe try it first without the raven in the back just because it would be a little bit more easier if you just have the one skin tone up here right. just to match it but and make it you know maybe you only have to print on one side of the shirt however you never know what might happen I still think that would be hysterical with just Fake button down, three exits to Hattiesburg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll do different variations. We'll have some where it's just like Adam's face. <laughs> <laughs> and like, no, they haven't seen us. And they're like, who is this guy? And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> they just want like a fake tank top and do like shoulder tattoos. Too. Yeah. <laughs> just have three tattoos of Adam's face. <laughs> <laughs> Front and each side, but me yeah, making just profile on this. Side. Yeah, me making different faces. Like one's like, it's like different shots. <laughs> one one face You're always so, has so sassy about that last one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one well one face that you make always has to be blue steel, though. Absolutely. Until Absolutely. the final, until the until the like the last year you guys are gonna make of that whole entire series, and when it becomes <gasps> Magnum, <laughs> it's just the same face. <laughs> yeah, but your head is glowing beyond it. Yeah, and it's, it, that's the big picture on the back of the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's no, it's you gotta get like a whole entire picture shirt of that scene from Zoolander, so it's like it looks like the body is there, but you just Photoshop your face on top of it. <laughs> I kind of like it, but I think it'd be even funnier if like he wasn't making a face and it's <laughs> photoshopped <laughs> over Ben Stiller, so it's just like Magnum. <laughs> just, it's regular, like like my like my high school picture. <laughs> <laughs> Just full cheesing. <laughs> full on cheesing, full on love and life, full on. I mean, 
we I, I've I've brought up some ideas for merch in the podcast. This might be the one that I think actually gets up the ground because the fact of the matter is you guys are making your own shirts. You don't have to like, oh, is how much is gonna cost? How much is this gonna have to, you know, get to ship on to us and everything? Can some place do it? It's like, no, the question is, can we do this? It's not do you want to do this, it's can we actually do this? And you guys have again, if you guys have been making this work as a band. Well, Adam's been apart from the band, you know, in terms of distance wise for two years because Benny decided to move to Connecticut and you guys are still making it work. The drive is still there. Making these t-shirts very well might become a thing that is very viable in terms of if it's going to happen. So I'm kind of excited about this one. Yeah, I like it. it. It's a good way to uh, keep doing stupid shit. While we're exactly. Plus it's funny. And if it's funny, there's a much greater chance we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we laugh at it, it it'll happen at some point. Good shot. Plus, plus, what's what's life about it if you can't have fun with it? We, you know, if you're too serious about life, then you don't have fun with it. You guys are making music and you guys are going on tour. This is fun shit. So have fun with it. Yeah, exactly. I, it's uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun touring, especially, um, just because I mean. At the end of the day, what's kind of fucking crazy is like we don't see each other as much as as we used to. So now we get two weeks of uninterrupted drive time, <laughs> and then we won't see each other for months because we're gonna be sick of each other. <laughs> oh, and it's like it's gonna be like when do we drive down to to Charlotte? Uh, the, we'll be we have to get to Charlotte on the third, so probably the third. Just <laughs> there's just that drive straight down, straight south down the eastern seaboard. <laughs> yes, yeah, a little wild and wacky at the end of it. Yeah, we have to leave from Philly, so it's gonna be like eight hours, <laughs> dude. The best part, or not the best part, but the funniest part was like of the last tour was us just <laughs> a straight drive from Ohio of our la- the point of our last show right back down to Houston. I was off like four energy drinks. I was delirious driving a car. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we almost died like ten times. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> and then, and then in Kentucky, in Kentucky, at like three a.m., there was bumper to bumper traffic for no. I don't remember what the reason was. I think there could have been I don't a think reason. We ever found out. It's been construction. What are they building in Kentucky? <laughs> I just remember An- I another just remember bourbon distillery. I don't know. Yeah. I just remember uh, being in a dead stop and Benny's like, someone better fucking be dead. <laughs> so mad. You remember though that like that fucking tractor trailer started backing up on that girl in the Prius and like oh. five people were honking at the tractor trailer, like fucking stop. <laughs> I thought we were about to witness I thought we were about to witness the death. I have to stop talking. I was like, somebody's about to be fucking dead. <laughs> It was fucking scary. I hope she's listening. I I hope <laughs> she's like, oh my god, that's me. <laughs> oh my god, that's me who almost died. My Prius almost became a pancake. I almost became the filling. <laughs> we were speaking of like if somebody's listening. Um, a couple of years ago, my my girlfriend got into a car accident. Um, it, right after we moved up here. And months later, we, we flew down to Florida to visit my parents. And the girl in front of us on the plane was like, I don't drive on I-95 anymore. This one time it was raining so bad and somebody flipped their black Yaris and I can't get on the road anymore. And Sophie was like, holy fuck, I flipped my black Yaris on I-95. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie was like, oh, oh. yeah, it's me. <laughs> she like posted it on Snapchat. She still has the photo somewhere. It's like when you traumatize someone <laughs> so bad. <laughs> but, I, I, I just, I never stop thinking about that. Like, what the fuck? But now it's just a meme among us. So whenever I see a Yaris, I send her a picture and I'm like, hey, it's a Yaris right side up the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna listen to this and be like, you dick. <laughs> She's gonna be like, yeah. I hate you guys. I hate you. I hate you. But hey, you know what? You made a memory of, you know, basically potentially being a real life version of Leonardo DiCaprio being like the oh 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 oh, oh. <laughs> literally with that. <laughs> well, exactly. 
Well, you, well, well, Sophie can take solace in the fact that she has successfully traumatized someone from driving on the highway ever again. On like the, the one of the longest in the country, too. <laughs> this yeah. fucking thing goes tip top to tip bottom. <laughs> Imagine someone from New York's going down to Florida. They're like, I'm taking back roads. <laughs> I'm taking Route 1 the whole way. You can say, I'm taking the post road. <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be like me dri- that'd be like me driving down to uh, Los Angeles. If I went down to Chicago to start, I'd be like, you know what? I'm not taking the, I'm not taking the highway. I'm taking the old Route 66 route. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying Just to stop see- in Radiator Springs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to go hang out at the Cadillac Ranch. That's it. That's that was my yeah. whole goal. And, 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 <laughs> really and, and say it's and say it's some you know roadside motel that definitely looks like I'm gonna end up becoming a victim in psycho. But you know what? Whatever. It's all part of the journey. They'll make an Ice Nine Kill song about me. How about that? Yeah. That'd be that'd be lit. Well, they gotta make a movie first. <laughs> and then they'll make the Ice Nine Kill song. What if I just live stream it? Then I made the movie right then and there. Perfect. Problem solved. <laughs> modern problems require modern solutions, man. That's a callback. That's a wrap, guys. We did We've it. We've come full circle. We've come full circle. That's a wrap. We did it. Well, how about this? I got one more question for you guys before we bounce. You guys ready for this one? Absolutely. Yeah. There is one, two, three of you guys. So I need you guys to give me in total three bands that you want everybody to check out. Recommend three that, you know, people might not necessarily know or bands that you want to get more people to recognize. Looking for three, so one each. Whoever wants to go first, go. I have two, sorry. Number one is three exits to Hattie. <laughs> 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 um, but but an actual answer um, is Convenient Trash. They're, they're a band out of Michigan. Um, I listened to their album Navy Blue a lot when we were recording our album Nevermore. Uh, And then we found out they moved to Texas. So when we did our show in Austin this this past summer, I was like, fuck it. Why not? And they they played with us and it was awesome. They sounded just like their albums. Absolutely check them out as soon as you possibly can. Oh, I suppose my band would be Gatherers. I haven't met them or anything. Some of my friends did. They recorded uh, some music with their drummer, so that's really cool. But um, there's the band I've gotten into recently. They don't have a ton of followers on Spotify or anything, and I think they're really good for deserve more recognition than they get. Uh, mine would be this band out of Nashville. Uh, they're called the Band Camino. And they play a lot of like, it's just straight, funky rock, a lot of really fun, high energy stuff. And then everyone knows who this is, but like, as they've been inspiring a lot of my guitar playing and drumming recently is Polythia. So that's it. <laughs> Makes sense. Like, I, I know I've I definitely heard of Polythia. I had a chance to see him live at the Ill Fated Blue Ridge Rock Fest of 2023, but I decided to watch Slipknot instead. And then Band Camino. Oh, yeah. Know the name. The other two, though, those are new. So I got more bands to check out. And everyone else does, too. So, yeah, all the suggestions. Go check them all out. That's why we asked the question. So you guys can get to know more music. Ooh, yeah. Now, as we bring this episode to the conclusion, one thing I'd like to do is give you guys, my guest, the Rick to Hattiesburg, a chance to do whatever you want to say. Plug over to plug. Promote over to promote at the end of the podcast. So, gentlemen, the floor is yours. Bye. I don't know. I, I think you said this is going to probably drop in the middle of our tour, but uh, wh- wherever we are, come check it out. Um, we'll be playing in uh, Vienna, Virginia, Cambridge, Massachusetts, um, Highlands, New Jersey, East Haven, Connecticut, Amityville, New York, Philly, Pennsylvania, Charlotte, North Carolina, Jacksonville, Florida, and Athens, Georgia. Um, you can get tickets for a lot of those shows in advance. Uh, if not, come to the door come hang out with us it's it's gonna be a fucking blast uh we're just as stupid if not dumber than we sound on the podcast uh and in a fun way uh buy the merch we were talking about for a while it's pretty sick and if you buy it we can make more of it so that's that's awesome stream us on spotify uh we got our album nevermore on there we're hoping to put out our first album again sometime soon and maybe even get something new coming uh 
at some point in the future. I, I can't promise dates. <laughs> you know how hard it is to schedule. <laughs> <laughs> No, we know how hard it is because we already talked about how hard it is for you guys to get something scheduled. So it's just stay in touch with the guys because that's your best way to find out when those shows are coming, when you're able to go see them play live, and when you can go pick up that merch as well, when they got music coming out. So this is what you're going to do. Go script for the podcast where it says, where it says, excuse me, find 3 Eggs Hattiesburg online. There'll be links labels for social media where you can find them online, website where you can get some merch, all that stuff where you can stream them. It's all going to be down there for you. So you can go check them out. Buy some merch so they can make more of it and they can make cooler stuff so that you can give Benny more work to do with his four-color uh, four press. Have a lot of fun with that. On top of that as well, I've got, you know, I'm doing all the work. I'm your own personal Google on this one. So, yeah, go and do it. Now, step number two. Gentlemen, I believe the last time of the podcast, I made a promise to you that said when I would get to see you perform live for the first time, that first round was on me. Well, it's been like almost three and a half years and I still have not yet, I still have yet to see you play live. So the promise still stands, but it's no longer first rounds on me. It's first two. Hell yeah. We got to come back and get you rack up a bar tab for you. <laughs> come back, come back a number of times. Pretty soon it's going to be, I'm not going to bring you guys. I'm not going to buy you guys around. I'm just going to bring you a whole case of fucking beer and call it a day. Just That's just a better angle. deal for you. <laughs> I've done that twice. So far, where I've been able to do that, and the one time I actually did it, and I ended up on the tour bus, um, when I knocked on the door to deliver the beer, the band I was delivering the beer to was on the bus, but it was a different band. <laughs> that was a little awkward, and then I ended up hanging out with them instead until the other band came back. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't for you. <laughs> but also, I mean, like, who are you guys? <laughs> I mean, when, when, they, when, when, I, when I opened the door, and the, one of the guys says, now, from an Indian English accent, who the fuck are you? And I'm like, I'm the beer man. Are you going to let me on or not? And he just lets me on. I end up talking to him, and I have a, bl- and I have a blast. And that's how I became friends with Holding Absence. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Literally, that's how it happened. It was funny as shit. So if you guys keep coming on the podcast, I have to bring you guys a case of fucking beer. <laughs> that works we'll we'll make sure to, to find our way out to hold you to your promise as soon as we can <laughs> yeah because all of a sudden i'm gonna get a message you guys are like in chicago or something it's like hey we're in chicago we're calling in the the uh the first round or the case whatever the fuck you want i'm just gonna respond back fuck all right what do you want <laughs> <laughs> we're in chicago and thirsty <laughs> and it's was- Tuesday. What are you gonna remember more? <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Adam, you you literally just sold me on that as much as possible. Use my own words against me, god damn it. Already. Before I incriminate myself further, as we get to the conclusion, I cannot end this by saying goodbye because it is way too final. It's been three and a half years said guys in the podcast. It's been a blast talking with you. Next time, let's not wait three and a half years, okay? Sounds good to me. So this is not goodbye, my friends. This is, I'll see you later. Awesome. See you later. Ooh, well, folks, that's my interview with the guys. Three exits to Hattiesburg. Benny, Adam, and of course, Dan coming in a little bit later. Now it's time for Kevin's final thoughts. So this band really stood out to me, especially right from the beginning, right from the get-go. Find out that one member still lives in Texas while Benny moved all the way to Connecticut. I mean, That is a huge, huge, huge chunk of land, huge chunk of real estate that separates these band members. And when it comes to bands that are big, I'm talking about, you know, record deals, have a lot of fans, have a lot of money behind them. They're able to do some of this stuff, like live wherever the heck they feel like because they're able to afford it. But a lot of times when smaller bands, when something like that happens, that's it. Like there's no overcoming that. What these guys have done is they have let their passion and they have let their drive continue to make sure that their goals are going to be achieved, that they're able to make the music they want to make and continue to play together by figuring it out every step of the way. Whether Adam's in Texas studying to get his doctor in physical therapy, whether Benny is in Connecticut doing whatever he's doing alongside Dan as well. How they're figuring it out, they're taking every opportunity they can and making it work, whether it's using airline miles, figuring out ways that's going to make it easier on them, printing their own merch, whatever it might be. They're figuring it out, and it's all about having the drive to do it, the want to do it, and the passion to do it. That is something that, you know, I understand where adult life and adult responsibilities can come in, especially with other things, family obligations. If you've got a spouse, if you have kids, there's a lot that can come into there that you have to be aware of. 
But if you have the want, if you have the will, you can find the way to make it work. And that's what three exits to Hattiesburg is doing. That's what we're still doing here on the Corporate Progression Podcast, literally five years from the jump. And that's how we're going to start off 2024. So make sure you follow along with Three Exits to Hattiesburg. Link description of the podcast under Find Three Exits to Hattiesburg online. Links where you can follow them online, listen to their music, find them where they're going to be playing live shows, and where you can get some of that sweet, sweet, sweet merch, baby. Also, make sure you follow the Corporate Progression Podcast in the description of the podcast. We have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Make sure you hit subscribe right down here on YouTube for the best interviews around the best rock and metal bands in the world. And, of course, the best upcoming bands as well for you to know about. And... You can hit subscribe, uh, subscribe or follow on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, or Amazon. Also hit the like button too on the episode because it helps us out a lot more. Thank you guys from Three Days Hattiesburg. It was great having you back on. Let's not wait three and a half years to do it again. On that note, that's me, everybody. Thank you for watching listening to the Core Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one of the big, healthy, and hearty. See ya!